You know, I imagine the people that run the 70 series program at Toyota, every now and again they go to their management and say, look, you know, things are getting really old fashioned, particularly inside, you know, we need some money to do some upgrades. And the management said, will say, yes, um, well, here's $30. Go crazy. With Toyota's new upgrade to the 70 Series comes a new door pocket. However, this is the standard one from Toyota. Big enough to put in a, in a service book or a road atlas or something like this. But they upgraded it. Hooray! And the new one looks like this. I've stripped the other door. This is from the left-hand door. Isn't that great? Much better. Thank you, Toyota. Tell me something. Why didn't you put it on both sides? Seriously? Just the left door? Spend this extra 75 cents and put it on both doors, won't you? Right. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for building all-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts I'm of the world. Of These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join the Patreon family now. Ta-da! So I use a lanolin spray. I start the interior by fitting an extension to the gear lever. Just makes gear changes more comfortable. And I'm going to build up the doors. So the idea behind upgrading the door is simply to increase the comfort of uh, the vehicle while driving and I'm actually going to put a bit even more effort into this one <clears throat> I want to try and really refine it very very well and that is interior fitments sound systems um, audio insulation and also the suspension I'm doing something quite different to the suspension that I've done before to try and get the ride even better and I think I can achieve it the door will consist of oh I've got a piece here <clears throat> I wanted to show you this is from the Department of the Interior. They make these beautiful door pads with an extra large door pocket. And to complete the ensemble, I have a really nice armrest. I'll show you that later. So that's the location of the one speaker. Mid-range goes there. And the way I work out how to cut it, this is quite easy because I know the measurements down here and here. What is not as easy is there is a small hole in the door structure that allows me to fit this mid-range here. But it's a very small gap. So what I did is I created this stencil and that's the stencil there. So then I line up the holes perfectly and then I can see that is the hole that I need to drill and I've based that on the hole in the door. So that's what I've got to do. Cut that hole, then I will fit the new door pocket, cut that hole and assemble everything together. So I measured that. It's flush with there. 11 millimeters, 11 mil, 11 mil. Now I can secure it in place. So there it is, ready to be put onto the door. But I have to prepare the door. I start by carefully removing the plastic so I can have access to these holes in the door. And this is acoustic dampening mat. I cut it into strips like this. There is no point or little point in covering the inside of the door with this material. The purpose of this material is to damp vibrations. It doesn't it work as an audio limiter, it doesn't stop audio traveling through it. It stops the sympathetic vibration of the steel from amplifying the sounds from outside the vehicle. It damps them. Okay, so I'm going to, to save weight, um, put a series of strips in the door. I have used one sheet 
for the entire door. Best thing to do is to use a roller. When laying it down, concentrate on the broad, flat areas of panel steel. You don't really need to put it on the curved areas. Another satisfying thing about doing this is that when you close the door, it closes with a thump as opposed to a clang. See? That's the difference. Next thing to do is put back the plastic. I'm using the same glue as they use in the factory. If you pull it off carefully, you can reuse it. And I have to cut it to make uh, space for the speakers. One there and one there. And do yourself a favor, when doing this to the door, the bottom of the door, water can collect in the bottom of the door, and this is a prime rust spot for almost any car. So I use a lanolin spray, and I squirt in the bottom of the door through these holes here. Just give everything a bit of a spray. I've run all the speaker wires through inside the cab and I'm ready to put this in. The fact is this is quite fiddly and painstaking work. I'll show you when I'm finished. And now, drum roll, ta-da! I've had these for a while and I've been looking forward to fit them. They're armrests. They're made by one stone. Oh, yes. Right, you're supposed to measure, um, but that's about where I want them. They have magnets. Yeah, looks good to me. So now it comes with a protective that. And rubber feet. Now I have no idea why there are a flurry of these products now in Australia but I might have had something to do with the fact that I got my first Land Cruiser armrests in Dubai in 2016 and of course I put it in a video on a video and within a couple of years there were several available Doesn't that look good? There's the door. The door is now finished. Hmm. I've had a thought. Maybe it's not finished. There you go. My thought, actually, is that I've got this beautiful dash pocket thing made by Caprivi in South Africa. I don't, I'm not sure if you can still get them. Uh, wouldn't it be great to match that with the leather because the leather against the blue looks really nice how easy would that be to do that would be easy to take off four bolts I'm gonna look into that make it nice and tight and then do that. extends the gear stick by two inches and it just makes it just a little bit more comfortable to change gears. Um, and I've had it on all my 70 series true, uh, Land Cruisers. And it's just a little bit nicer. And also, if I want to adjust anything on the radio, I can do it with my hand on top and just reach up. Thank you so much for watching. These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join our Patreon family now.